All right. Woo. I'm going to pray. Jesus, we worship you. We love you. We thank you for the opportunity to gather in your presence, God. There's nothing sweeter than being where you are. We love you, Jesus. We worship you and we trust you. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you have your way today. I thank you for being here. God, that may we make room for you in our hearts and our minds today as the word is being preached. God, I just ask you to speak through me. I just feel I'm just flesh, God, but but with you, all things are possible, God. I just break all unworthiness right now in Jesus' name. I just break all distraction right now in Jesus' name. God, you know what happened this month and this week, God. And we trust you. We trust and know that you have us safe in your loving arms, God. And again, I just break distraction, God. I just break worry right now in Jesus' name. We love you, God. We worship you. Amen. All right. As normal. Kind of weird. I got this phone. I, I, I didn't break my other phone. I have this really cool Z Fold that like folds out and it's like a really big thing. And my daughter Shiloh is super schemy sometimes and she'll stand over your shoulder and get the password for your phone after you change it. Yeah. And she'll, all, next thing you know, all you hear is, yes. And you turn around like, what? Nothing. Ta- takes my phone unlocks it and then gives it to my baby Minna to watch uh, Octonauts on and then I get it from Minna and it's just completely cracked just just shattered I'm like mm. and I don't know if the lady put insurance on it so <laughs> that's really super fun so I've been yeah and then I didn't realize I had two phones and I have people I need to communicate through the other phone so it's wonderful but when that happened Felt my blood pressure go up just a little bit, but then I remembered that it is just a phone, (laughs) right? And it only costs money. And I'm really happy that when I got to watch Octonauts there for that that hour right there. So I, I have a harder time. Normally I can navigate on this phone. I'll have like pictures on here and words on here. So now I have to uh, work back and forth. So. It takes me a little bit, that's why. All right, so for the first song, uh, Believe For It, (laughs) the words are, move the unmovable, break the unbreakable, God we believe. God we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God we believe, God we believe for it. And I love it. Do you have something that seems unmovable in your life right now? You have something that seems see, seems unbreakable. And then it repeats, God, we believe. God, we believe for it. And I love there's this that four times, God, we believe. God, we believe for it. We're declaring these things. When you're singing these songs, think about what's, what you think is unmovable in your life, right? God, I believe for that right there to be moved in Jesus' name. What seems unbreakable in your life? God. This has to break, and God, I believe for it. God, I believe you for it. I love it. There's just declarations over and over and over again. You are the way when there seems to be no way. We trust in you. God, you have the final say. And depending on where you're at in life, do you believe that he is the way? When you're struggling with something, when you're trying to make financial ends meet, do you believe that he is the way, the means by which you can get this done? Because sometimes there seems, I love it, there seems to be no, there just seems to be no way. There's a lot of seeming you can do in life and be completely wrong. Wow. The I Speak Jesus song, I love that that we, we put that in there, and it keeps coming back and back. It's so good. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. 
break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Woo! I think in my head, um, when you know that he is power and you know that he is healing and you know that his name is life and you know that he breaks every stronghold and he shines through the shadows, when you have that revelation, then you can burn like a fire. Then your heart will be on fire with passionate love for Jesus because you know he is power. You know he is healing. You know he is life. And you know he breaks every stronghold in your life. And when you know that, you can just talk with this, this confidence that seems like arrogance, but it's not. It's, it's a confidence in knowing who he is. And then when you're on fire for him, you're, just, you're unstoppable. You're unmovable. You blaze the way where you go. And I believe it just takes, it takes actually believing that he is power, that he is healing just declared over your life. And then, um, let me see what I have in my notes for this one. So in the next one, it says, I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Have you ever been around, like, in public, and you're in, like, a group of people, and the, the conversation's just not very wholesome, Right? And things are just getting kind of nasty. I mean, it can be that way out in the world. And sometimes you don't, you don't ask to be put in these situations, but sometimes you are. And sometimes you put yourself in these situations, and you realize the state that you're in, and you're like, ugh, what I wouldn't give for a, a good meeting with Nate, with just us and our Bible. And I was going to say coffee, but that would just not be me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be drinking the coffee. Um, but sometimes you can you can put yourself in these positions. And um, a while back, I went to a comedy show with a really good friend of mine, and it was more of a more of like a business thing. He's a like a stone supplier, and um, I've never been to a comedy show, but I've always wanted to go to a comedy show like all my life. Uh, I thought it would be really 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 cool. So then it gets it gets time. We go to the comedy show. It's in the city and all that stuff. And I'm sitting there in the middle of, of this just big auditorium, sold out, sold out place to hear this guy be funny. Which my girls are super blessed because I don't charge them any money and they get to laugh all day. It's just the guys, <laughs> that guy's got it going. I tell you, whoa. But I'm sitting in the midst of the world, right? And I have placed myself there. I'm telling you, I did not like it one stinking bit. Like, I am not of this world anymore. And that uh, the thoughts that I were having about how cool and how funny, and I see this guy, and he laughs, but, man, sometimes he's inappropriate. And um, I could just see as I was sitting there where I was at all the thoughts and all the decisions that had led me to that moment of a place that I didn't want to be. And all I wanted to do was speak Jesus, right? These people were using a microphone. And they go from place to place to place to place. And they tell these filthy jokes. And, um, you know, like one lady, she was starting with like an abortion joke. And it was just like, I hear people laugh. And I'm just like, "Uh uh-oh, I don't think I'm in the right spot. Um, and then the next guy comes up and he starts saying, uh, I got some Bible jokes. Does anybody want to hear them? And everybody's all like, woo. And I'm like, I really need to leave this place. (laughs) So I get up and then I go out into the, in the foyer or whatever. And then I, um, come back out to the main guy. And I was like, surely there's some redemption here. No, (laughs) no. Get up and run. You know what I mean? I put myself through something that was a learning lesson for me, obviously. Um, and praise God, too. And when I, was, when I was done with that, I said, well, God was like, well, did you learn a lesson? Whew. Yep, I sure did. I miss you even more than I did uh, one hour before I went into this thing. But it's just so funny how you can put yourself in a position where all I wanted to do is speak Jesus. And these people are using their 
um, their authority, their oikos, their influence to stand up. And I was thinking, you know, like when I have a microphone, there's some really important things that get said and there's some work that gets done and there's some intimacy that increases. And it just made me just really heartbroken that sometimes we put ourselves in a little box and this is just what we see right here. The world's nasty and the world's wicked and there's a lot of bad stuff out there. And it made me have a more fervent heart for for prayer for these people that I see and these influencers or whatever they are. There's there's a lot to it and the world's a lot nastier than I remembered. And um and we're not to be of this world, right? And it was such a good reminder and a good relationship builder for me and the Lord. And as funny as, as I put myself in that position despite many warnings Listen to the Holy Spirit, because you don't want to be in the middle of the city on a Friday, <laughs> probably at an auditorium with a bunch of demons. Maybe I should have got up and started just speaking in tongues or something. Really destroy it. But I learned a lesson, guys, you know. God is good, period. So on uh, Waymaker, you are here working in this place. I worship you. Feel it. Own it. Know that it's true. It's so good. Okay. I have more on worship, but I'm gonna I'm gonna sail on through. Oh, I can't skip that one. That lean back song. Oh my gosh. I think you guys just do it to me on purpose. I will lean back in the loving arms of a beautiful father. Breathe deep and know that he is good. I love this. He's a love like no other. I was thinking about uh, John, how he laid his uh, head back on Jesus. and um, Do we get to do that with God? Can I? Do I have that type of relationship when I'm alone with him to just lean on back into his loving arms? Like, do I have that in me? to just to put myself in position to just lean back. I think about when in Eden she comes and sits on my lap and she like leans back in me and there's that sound that she makes. She goes, oh, it's like, and then Minna's like, mm. like there's this, there's, there's something that takes place once that contact has been made. It's like the endorphins, it's like the whatever. It's, it's, it's a moment that happens where she feels safe, she feels secure, she feels loved. Can we feel that way with God, right? Can we get in there? Can we shut that door? Can we move all the distractions and lay back and go, oh, I love you. Whew. Let's get to that place. Just breathe deep. What are you going through? It says breathe deep and know that he is good. What are you going through in your life? Can you just breathe deep and relax? Just lay back in his loving arms and just know, just forget all that stuff and just know that he is good. And he has something for you. He has a love like no other. I'm telling you, I can love my kids. My kids can love me back. And I know when they love me, like Minna loves me unconditionally. Like she just, she just knows that I'm her person. Now, that might not be true because if I don't give her octonauts or applesauce, she doesn't love me as much as she did. But <laughs> but there's this there's this level of love that we know and that we understand and that we can comprehend but he is a love like no other. You can't fathom this love that he has for you. You don't even know. It doesn't even break the surface of your understanding that somebody could love you as much as he does. Way too good. And then I love this part. Um, so it was talking about that kind of leaning back into the loving arms. And then now it says, now I can see your love is better than all the others that I've seen. I'm breathing deep all of your goodness, your loving kindness to me. And this is that kind of revelation that we need. Now, because this person, now I can see, before they couldn't see, right? Now I can see your love is better. Do we remember a time in our life where we realized that his love was better 
that we've just been wasting our time when he becomes so real you can't say anything but you're so real and you can't just do anything but sit there and cry because you have that revelation and you don't know how to explain it or how to express it or how to tell anybody about it but that's the beautiful part of it because his love cannot be explained it has to be experienced there's so many times where how was it oh it's it's oh, man he ah he's so good yeah what happened oh man he he loved me <laughs> what people don't understand that sometimes when they when you can just be so loved by him that there's no expression. Yeah, sure, my mom loves me. Sure, my wife loves me. Sure, my kids love me. Yeah, I have some good friends. But no, it doesn't even, it fails in all comparisons to his love. His love. Can you believe that? The love you know fails in all comparisons when you match it up to his. Golly, I love my kids so much. It's nothing. It's a fraction of the amount of love that he has for us. Because they can see that his love is better than all the others that I've seen. Almost makes me think that person's going to keep comparing. Like, no, there's no comparison. His love is already at the top, and there's no, there's no other part of that list. Okay, that's all I had for worship. Whew. Jesus, oh, I just got to pray again. Jesus, you're so beautiful. You're so worthy. You're so kind. You're so loving. You're so faithful. You're so trustworthy. God, to feel your love is amazing, God. God, I just ask for a deeper understanding of your love, God. A revelation of how much you love us, God. That I not just know it, but I feel it and I own it and I live it. That I grab a hold of it and I own it for myself. God is love and he loves me. God, you're so just and you're so merciful. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. There's nobody that loves like you love. <laughs> nobody that loves like you love her. Ah, so good. Okay, I am going to be, um, sorry, amen. <laughs> somebody might saw their eyes closed, I don't know. <laughs> I always thought it was funny. I never opened up my eyes until somebody said amen when I was a little kid because I wasn't sure if it was done. And I didn't want my Pentecostal grandma to give me the business. Pentecostal great-grandma. Okay, I um, have been thinking a lot this month, um, and we've been also discussing it in our youth group. Um, God's been really pressing on me to talk about culture and what culture he desires. And I haven't wrapped my head all the way around it. I'm just going to bounce off some ideas and some understandings I have of what he's telling me. And I guess it really started when um, I was talking to Peyton and we were in the car and there's a, she was talking to me about her day, you know, and I'm, I'm super inquisitive when it comes to my kids' this day. I want to know, how was your day? What happened? Who talked to you? Did, did you feel bad? Did you feel good? I wish I could make that time for all of them every day, but sometimes it's like hit two this day and three this day or whatever. But um, I was talking to Peyton, and our, our conversations are pretty deep. Um, we have a really good um, relationship where I feel like she's pretty open and honest with me. Let's keep it that way, Jesus. Um. And she was talking about a, a kid at school, and um, he was acting down, and then there was another kid, and they were, they were acting down, and uh, she made it a thing in her to, to make him feel good, you know? How was your day? How was your weekend? What'd you eat for supper last night? You know, get him, get him thinking about, she says, if I can get him thinking about other stuff, maybe they won't be bummed out about what they were thinking about type of deal. So she gets them. She gets them thinking. What'd you have for supper? What'd you? Oh, that's really cool. And then she's interested in what they say, right? She's loving them. I love it. And um, this is really cool because, like, you know, I never sat Peyton down and said, "Hey, if somebody's bummed, you know, this is something that she's 
she's bringing up herself and she's creating herself, which I think is awesome. And she says, but you know what was really cool was I was really bummed out yesterday. And that same guy knew I was bummed out. And he came up and said, how was your weekend? I was like blown away. And, he, and then um, she started talking about how actually a, a, a couple of people do that in her grade. And I said, Peyton, that's really awesome. I was like, what you're doing right now is you're creating a culture because you're influential. Like you have favor with people. You're a Christian. You love Jesus. You're going to shine in those shadows, right? Somebody's depressed and everything. You, you see them and you want to pick them up. You want to give them a good word because it doesn't cost you anything, right? You're just, it's just what you are. It's what you do and who you are. So that got me to thinking, and I was encouraging her that you're starting a really good culture there. You know, it could be in other schools where somebody's bummed out and they're like, not my problem. Nope, don't talk to him. Don't talk to her. They're not at my lunch table. They're not at my friend group. No. Somebody's walking low. You all right today? How hard is that? You know, how much time does that take out of your life? What's up? You all right today? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, then you're done. That's good. All right. Bless you, man. You gave them an opportunity, right? You, you, they're a person. They matter. And I thought it was really cool because I started telling her, you know, you're, you're creating a, a loving environment and a culture that cares about people. And um, God just started bringing up just like, psh, 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 like just several different examples in my life um, and different people in my life and what kind of culture they're creating. And it was kind of cool because I was, I felt like I had like a cheat code and God was talking to me and, and I just got to like, it's really cool when you have a revelation and then you start to see something unlock and then now it's like, psh, 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 and then there's these ideas that start to form. They're wonderful. Creating a culture in this this time is super, super important. And we were, yeah, I guess Halloween's coming up. And my family, absolutely no go on Halloween. Like, not even nothing. Um, and for very, very good reasons. But uh, my kids were talking about a fall festival party that they have coming up. And it was a bunch of uh, trick-or-treating and costume parades and stuff like that and you know some of the younger ones were like well why can't we go and then you know normally this is where we reaffirm again that you know we don't worship the devil <laughs> I don't want to get too extreme with you guys but um, we have a really fun joke in our house but um, Peyton just said uh, guys don't you remember what I was reading it with you in the Bible yesterday and I thought it was really cool because this is the conversation that's happening at my table. It's so sweet. Um, they read their Bibles every night, which is awesome. And now they started to, Peyton started to read the Bible to her sisters because she doesn't understand it that well if she doesn't read it out loud. And she thinks that it'll keep the other two girls more on task for reading the Bible because she's going to be reading it with them. And then they get to be going over it and all this kind of stuff. My kids, man, they did this. It's so cool. Such a proud father. Um, she said, we were just reading it in the Bible. What does light have to do with darkness? And then I was like, girl, get it. Preach to your sisters. Let's go. And um, she was just like, she remembered a story where we were involved in a different church and one of the leadership came up and they were having like a trunk or treat thing. And that's where I cut out early because I'm, I'm not like even the church of Satan was just like, we love Halloween. It's like the one day where Christians like, dress up and dress up like demons and witches and, um, you know, give credit. And this person in leadership went, came in and she was like, I'm a witch. And I was like, ugh, like, ugh. And then her other friend came and says, I'm a witch too. And I said, and I'm out of here. See you later. Um, but with that being said, what does, what does light have to do with the darkness? You know what I mean? Like, Witches are real. Demons are real. Goblins and ghosts and all that kind of stuff. Why? I do not entertain it. Not even for a second. It's sick. It's filthy and it's twisted. We are not to be with it ever. Nothing. Nothing. Are you sad your kids won't get candy? Go buy them candy then. Go get them a whole big old bag of candy and go have a fun game night or something like that. 
what we like to do is the day after Halloween or two days after, all of that costume stuff goes on sale, and you better believe my kids have pr uh, princess outfits, right? Because that's what they are. They're princesses. And then they're, they're costumes, right? And what we do is we dress up at home, and we have tea parties, and we, have, we don't trick or treat. No. Give me Jesus. That's all I want. And I want to speak the name of Jesus. And this time, don't get it twisted. There's no just a little bit, right? What does light have to do with dark? What does dark have to do with light? You know, there's that fence. Like, there's one side. I'll say this again. There's God's side, and then there's the devil's side. And that guy is walking on the fence. And then God's people go up. Devil's people go down. Next thing you know, Satan comes back up and says, come on, bud, let's go. Oh, no, I didn't choose you. I didn't choose him, and I certainly didn't choose you, Satan. And Satan goes, I own the fence. Let's go. End of story. There, no fence walking in Christianity, okay? You can't be on it. All right. I'm just going off on one today. Okay. I am going to be preaching out of 1110, and I finally got to the Bible. How about that? <laughs> So 1 Corinthians, I'm going to be doing the the wedding verse, that, or the wedding chapter. That's what I'm, it's like said in almost all the weddings, right? 1 Corinthians 13. And it's only 13 verses, so that's really super great. But what I actually wanted to start off with is um, a little excerpt from twenty Matthew 22, I believe. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, Matthew 22, um, 34. I'm just going to go through it just as a like refresher of what I'm talking about for love God, love people. Um, 35 says, I'll start from 34. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees with his reply, they met together to question him again. One of them, an expert in religious law, Ooh, tried to trap him with a question. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law is and all the demands of the prophet are based on these two commandments. Ooh. So that's just a little preface on love God, love people, and why it's so important. All right, so 1 Corinthians 13. Let me see, make sure I got through this. Yep, okay. 13, if I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but did not love, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but did not love others, I would be doing nothing. What? All right. So if I could if I could speak all the languages of earth, right, and of angels. This Bible right here is telling me that that would be as annoying as or it would be like a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal if I didn't have love. Woo. If I had the gift of prophecy, have you guys ever been around a prophetic person before? And they, they tell you stuff about yourself that nobody knows but you and God, and it's just some strange person. That's really cool. We call it like when, they, when you get your mail read. Somebody reads your mail, and it's like, that's just okay. That's really, really sweet. And uh, sometimes that happens is because like when you're not listening, God has to use somebody else to speak through and get to you. Oh, hardhead. Tell you what. Sometimes it's not hard, but... All right, that'd be really cool, though. If I had the gift of prophecy and if I understood all of God's secret plans, all knowledge, and if I had faith that I could move a mountain but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, 
I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Can you imagine that? I'm supposed to give away all my stuff. Because it's the right thing to do. That'll make me. And you know what? I'm even going to sacrifice my body. Cool. But why'd you do it? Why? Why did you do these things? You have to be spurred on and motivated by love. A love like no other. <laughs> that was such a good song. If I could sing, I'd be singing right now, guys. That'd be good. That's just so beautiful when he puts a song in your heart, and then God's like, yeah, it's like, go for it. I, I hear your heart and not your notes. These guys might hear my notes, though. I don't know. All right. If I gave everything I had before, okay. I love how one through three I have in my notes is the absolute necessity of love and the examples of awesome feats, but without love, they are useless to God. Love is the eternal gift. The gifts are temporal. So if he gave you the gift to speak in all languages, or if he gave you the gift of prophecy, or to have faith to move mountains, or to, to give acts of service to sacrifice everything to help people, those are all really cool. But what's really cool that God desires is love. I'm going to be hammering this home a bunch, guys. I'm sorry. But it's just, it's so good. So somebody who, like, I'm thinking now, like, if you have all these gifts in these places, it seems like a really, a really successful, like, area to be in. You have the, somebody that can speak in all tongues. You have some prophecy. You have all that. But I've, I've been to churches like that, and I've walked out and not felt loved, right? And um, we can, we can get, we got to be careful because we can go into a place with some dispositions where, well, they didn't love me. Yeah, but you didn't go out and try to love them too. So if sometimes you leave a church and you don't feel loved, be real with yourself. Why don't I feel loved? Did I do something? Could I have loved? It didn't, God didn't say, come into the church and let them love you. Like, go into the church and love them. Love them more than you expected to be loved. That's it. Love them. Because, you know, there's, there's so many things that happen in church and leadership and people, and there's just so many opinions that can be had and made that just aren't true, you know? If you would just come to that person and love them instead of talk about them, you know, it would, a lot of different stuff would happen. Maybe they didn't know they were making you feel that way, right? And maybe they need to know that they were making you feel that way, right? So, um, like I work on the, like I have a bunch of different places that I work and um, in this, this place that I do work, they have created such a toxic work environment. Not, not the place that I'm currently working, by any means. Somewhere where I've witnessed. Um, they have such a toxic work environment. They have, like, morning meetings, and then I hear, the, you know, F-bombs and these swear words and talking aggressively, and they're always trying to blame somebody and find out, you know, even if somebody did something wrong, they're going to try to find somebody to blame to make them look less wrong or they want you to be wrong with them so then they're not as wrong. And um, there's such this toxic culture that got created, and I started to sit back and look at it as God's talking to me about culture, and I realized that there is no love in it. There is no love in that place. I don't feel loved when I walk in there, and it makes me feel like a jerk, you know? That guy didn't say hi to me. Why would I say hi to him? Three weeks in a row, homeboys yelling at everybody and everybody, and da, da, da. And God's like, yeah, but aren't we talking about culture this month, Jesse? You have identified a bad culture, and you have identified the source of that bad culture. What, yeah, what am I going to do with it, right? It just says right here, uh, if you have the prophecy, right, and you can see or the language and you know God gave me a revelation into it, he said, what are you going to do about it? Well, I'm just going to talk crap with my wife and my friends about how gosh darn toxic that place is and I can't wait to get out. No. Whew. I got to love these people, God. you telling me I got to go to that guy and I got to love him? He says, no, you don't got to. You get to. Change your gottas into gets. You'll be good. 
Sounded like Yiddish or something. <laughs> Change your gata into gits. <laughs> I get to love these people. They're in my area of influence, right? So what did I do when I saw the big boss man and he was by himself? Hey. Hi, sir. <laughs> Hi, sir. I'm Jesse. You know, and we uh, like got to get to know each other a little bit. And he, like, when, when I said it to him, I could just tell that he was like, like, what are you doing? This is not, this is nice. We don't do nice here. And especially nice for no reason, right? Because it was just a, a Tuesday afternoon and he was at a copier and I was walking in to go to the bathroom. What I didn't, what, I, what, I, what my flesh wanted to do was keep your head down, be invisible. That way they, you know, they don't know your name and you can't be part of the problem. <laughs> just go to the bathroom, go finish your stuff. No, I need to love this man, right? So, uh, hey, how, how are you? Oh, I'm good. Did you have a good weekend? Yeah, I sure did. What'd you do? Did you go to the lake or something? It, he wasn't expecting it to go this far, you know what I mean? It was just like, he's like, okay, I'll entertain this. I'm saying, okay, well, back to work, sir. Have a good day. And then um, I'm walking through a couple other days later, and it's just him and me and my buddy, and I can, uh, he's like, here comes this guy. I feel like my friend, you know, and then he comes up. He, hey, Jess. What's up? You having a good day? Yes, sir, I am. All right, keep up. Keep up the work. Go to work. And then we get done, and my friend's like, what in the world? And I'm just like, I see it, right? I see it. I know what God is saying to me, and I know that I can change a toxic culture, even if I'm not, I don't, I'm not in their employees. I'm not even in their leadership. I'm not even in their nothing but I can talk to their boss. And I don't mean anything to this guy. But what's really cool is God gives me favor with people, right? There's something that oozes out of me, and it's Jesus. And they don't know they want it, but they need it. They absolutely need it. Otherwise, they wouldn't be acting this way, and they wouldn't be treating people this way, and they wouldn't be hurt that way. I love it because we, we get a chance to do the quote-unquote hard stuff God, that felt so hard to just go and just, hey, bud. But guess what? As soon as I got into it, I didn't feel like I was faking it because this is what I do, right? This is what we do. We love people. We are a culture. Wherever we walk, there's people that we influence. There's a circle. There's an oikos. There's a sphere of influence that you have that I don't, that you have that I don't, that you have that I don't. What do we do when we walk into these places? Do we put our head down? No. We see. Pay attention. What's God saying? What can we do? You know, even if it's just a little bit. Hey, good job. You know, and it's something as easy as, as Peyton was saying. How was your day? Because you're, 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 you're taking time out of your time to learn about their time and to care about their time. And it turns out it's really, really easy to make that pause, right? It's not easy to think about it in the moment, but once you stop and you pause and you're in that moment, it all makes sense why that you're doing that. Okay, so all of that being said, there's, there's good cultures and there's bad cultures. Um, and then I have what, what does that culture look like that God desires, all right, so we go into verse 4, and you guys probably have heard this a million times in your life. All right, number 4. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice but rejoices whenever the truth wins out love never gives up never loses faith is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance and i know we've heard this like a ton and then when i've read this in the past and where i was at in my mind um i'm thinking in my heart love i need love i need to have love and um, i can check my heart by knowing 
um, if I have love or the authenticity of my love because I can gauge it with how patient I am, with how kind I am, and how not jealous I get, and how much I don't boast, right? But God has me in this atmosphere where I'm thinking about culture and creating a culture, and this involves more than just myself, right? So us as Church on the Rock, we, we must be patient, right? We must be kind, and we're definitely not jealous people of each other, right? And we're not boastful. And um, I used to take this for myself, but we need to take this for ourselves as a culture of church on the rock. And what are we creating when people come into this door? Do they feel like we're patient? Do they feel like we're kind? And even people that go to the, you know, you know what I mean? Just keep it going. Um, it is not irritable. That one's hard. <laughs> Being irritable is like, Gah! it's easy to get there. Um, Keeps no record of being wronged. Huh. What would that look like, right? <laughs> like even outside these church doors. Ooh, they were wrong. Not a single I told you so should ever come out of your mouth, right? Not loving them if I told them. To, I mean, if you have that, I mean, if me and Nate were messing around, I'd probably say I told you so, but he'd know that was my version of the way we love each other. But <laughs> keeps no record of being wrong. I love this. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. This is the hard one right here, right? Love never gives up. Never loses faith. And is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. So if, if we are to create a culture here, you know, you can look at these, and obviously it starts with us before we can go into the bigger part of it. So, so take, this, take this back with you and, and really gauge where you're at or how is your culture, right, in your household. How is the culture in your household? You may have a bunch of kids. You may have none. It might just be the two of you. There's still a culture there that was created, you know, um, me and my wife know that there's struggles in our household when um, we're not patient with each other. When we, when, we, when we argue, we just try to hurt each other, right? And we, we get really irritable. So we know, that, we know that something's off in our love, in our gauge, in our relationship, in the culture that we're creating. But the cool thing is, is when you realize that that culture is starting to wane off, um, just like Cindy says, um, we, we really need to, you know, not just read the Bible and pray, but we really need to read the Bible and pray together. And that got me to be like, I will try that. I am on board, and I will try to be quiet when we talk about the Bible because <laughs> I always have a million zillion things to say when we read just one verse. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is really cool too. So that's like something I personally get to work on. And I... I try to do that at the during the youth too, but as he normally beats me to the punch, so <laughs> oh man, youth is so much fun um it's only only it's uh me Azzy, and Peyton um and I would say that we have an absolute blast right like what we're what we're doing um and it's really cool since there's only two of us, three of us. Um, and we're, we're talking about, this is what we're talking about in youth too, is we're just talking about culture and what kind of culture do we want to create? And when we have, when we have new kids come in, what do we want to happen, right? We want them to come in and we want them to feel loved and appreciated and, and drawn close to and vulnerable and they can, they can speak about their problems. And it's cool because we just get to, we just get to discuss what kind of culture God desires and what we can do to create that. Um, and it's really great. I just can't wait until we get more people coming in and then it'll, it'll be cool to watch that, that culture expand. Um, but what I'm really excited about is God's had us at this number for a little bit and it's exciting. Um, even if as he comes in and wants pizza and it's the most disgusting pizza I've ever, are you kidding me? Uh, she's like we should all right sorry guys i should context 
We should have pizza. I want McDonald's. Pizza. <laughs> Duh. Um, Azzy has the most ridiculous pizza order, and it's a... It's not so good. It's absolutely not. All right. She she wanted a large pizza, and she wanted mushrooms, black olives, and nothing else. That's it. You kidding me right now? Oh, I'm sorry. I missed an important part. Extra black olives. Sorry. Yep. Missed another one. Extra mushrooms. I'm sitting here on the phone with the pizza guy and I'm like unfortunately I need to order this pizza right here uh, black olives and mushrooms and she's all like extra extra okay can I have extra black olives extra mushrooms too mushrooms get the mushrooms pizza comes and I can't even I'm like yo you are not a normal person I remember we had more people in the youth group when I was ordering pizzas and I had some of the kids say supreme get supreme and I'm like when I grew up you would just get beat up if you told the adult to order Supreme Pizza. Don't you know there's onions and mushrooms on there and peppers and all that? Just give me the greasy cheese and the pepperoni. What's the world coming to? This culture that's created. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then when we order uh, McDonald's, you're just really extra, Azzy. It's a really good extra. I mean, I'm thinking we're getting McDoubles and McChickens or something. Nope, she wants a grilled chicken sandwich. Like, who gets that from? Who gets that from McDonald's? Blows my mind. No Big Mac. No, just that. You do? <laughs> Maybe I'm the problem. Gee, it just takes me out. Or it takes me back because I'm just like my kids are like cheeseburgers and McChickens, and she's like, I'll have a grilled chicken sandwich and uh. Oh, yeah, the most extra part about you, the uh, media McFlurry that gets added, <laughs> added onto that. No Sprite, no Coke, doesn't drink it, but give me that McFlurry. Anyways, we have a lot of fun at youth group, um, and I believe that we are creating a culture um, that is just going to strictly just love people. And when they come in, we want them to feel more loved when they leave. So beautiful. Because we, we don't want people to come to youth, right, for... for uh, games or pizza or you know something like that and and we've decided that um the culture that we want to create is people who come just for jesus right um we don't want to lure them in with you know fun activities and they can plan uh, don't get me wrong the youth can plan their really fun activities and i totally support it and we totally fund it right um but what culture we're creating is passionate lovers of jesus right I want them to show up so they can love on each other. They can work through their problems together, you know? Because there's a lot of things that people don't realize that youth are going through that they can't talk to anybody about. And then the people they do have to talk to them about it are absolute garbage, right? They just give them just some toxic advice and all this kind of stuff. Like there is a generation that is dying on the inside. And a lot of us adults don't even think about it on a day-to-day -day basis but it's real right we have to we have to equip our kids to go in there and live this culture of being patient of being kind of of not being jealous not envying come on all right, number eight. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless but love will last forever. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. How cool is prophecy? And it's only in part. Ah, jeez. And you know what they're talking about, too, is like when, when, when he comes, when he is here, um, all of this stuff will be known to us, right? Um, prophecy, you know, tongues will be, you know, like there's just this deeper level, this deeper knowing, this deeper understanding, um, because we're not just flesh anymore, right? We're, we're, we're brought into his fullness. Um, so we, you know, tongues and languages are cool and prophecy is cool, but like I said, love is eternal. These gifts, they're not, right? Um, there won't really be that need for that when we get there because we're going to know and it's going to be so cool. But what the cool thing is, is, you know, 
gifts and prophecies are here, and then love is just on a steady incline all the way up. And then when it gets time, this is down, and this is still shooting up for eternity because love is never going to fail. It's never going to give up. It's always, oh, man. Love will last forever. I love it. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. Ah, I love it. Oh, I read, I'm like, just jump up and down reading this kind of stuff because it's that hope, it's that future, it's what we look forward to. And like, I, I, I flow in the prophetic and it's really fun, it's really awesome. But man, love is better. It's so cool. It's so better. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Ooh, I'm going to read that again. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. When I grew up, I put away childish things. Are we grown up, right? Have we put away those childish ideals and those um, religious things that we grew up in, this legalism? Um, because, you know, I, I, I talk a lot about God's love, right? And there could be some people out there that are, oh, this whole grace message and all that kind of stuff. Hell's real, guys, okay? There's, there's sunshine and there's rainbows, but there's also a real, real, real side to it. There, his name is Jesus, and he is the doorway, the only way that you can get to the Father, right? And then this grace is not a free-to-send card. It's a work on yourself. I love you. It's, if you would... If you would see how God feels about your sin, you would just drop it immediately because he's there and he's in anguish and he's saying, no, stop. I love you. Love yourself the way I love you. Sin would not be a really, it wouldn't be so um, appealing if you had to pay the price immediately for it, right? Right? He paid that price for you. Oh. If you, like, man, hey, if you do this, Jesse, I just want to let you know, it's death, and it's due immediately. Grace, gracious, merciful, loving Father has sent somebody named Jesus who has made a way so that we might know what love is. I want to know what love is. <laughs> I want you to show me. He showed you, right? You want to know what love is? He showed you. He showed you when his hands were up on that cross and nailed and his feet. Forgive him, Father. Ah. And then when he was separate from him, ah, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The gospel's real, guys. The love that he shows for you is real. And there's nothing like it, a love like no other. Who has loved you the best in your life? Who? I know you can think about that person that was like, they loved me so well. That is impartial. That's in part to what, the way Jesus loves you. And if you don't see that, he loves you more than that person does or did, then why don't you see that? Is there something in, your, in the way of your relationship with him that's stopping you from just accepting his love? Because there's so many times where you don't know what I've done, you don't know where I've been, you don't know what I've said, you don't know, you don't know anything, but he does. And he knew it before he gave his life for you. He said, I know, I love him, and I will, and I did. And he'll continue to love you even like there's this there's I just feel like there's this really big unworthiness thing and you know and sometimes I feel like I'm just so unworthy to be a dad of such beautiful girls and I'm just so unworthy to have like my wife like helps me run the construction company and she welds and she fixes stuff and she's like sometimes I just don't even feel worthy to be married to her because she's just she knows it all and she knows how to do it all and I'm just good with people you know what I mean it's just <laughs> Like, I'm not the guy that, guy that wants to put up fence and build a new deck and stuff like that. And she doesn't need my help for any of that stuff. So, so sometimes I just feel a little bit unworthy when I'm around my wife. Um, 
she lets me know it's okay and <laughs> but it's it's so funny how I can just feel unworthy with the person that I'm tied to you know what I mean you're worth it okay all those things that I was saying God he knows that about me my wife knows that about me right and there's some things that I can do that she can't. There's some people that I can influence that she can't. There's just that's why we're that's why we're together because it works. And that's why love will spur you on and keep you going. And it, and maybe I'm frustrated that my wife is buying another dog or wants to build a new fence. Like that stuff is frustrating to me because I think whoever wants to go out and build a fence, guys, <laughs> who my wife wants me to build a fence, by the way, and it's getting colder. So I love her. So I'm going to go build it. Hopefully it's not today because that's cold. Okay. When I was a child, I spoke and all right, thought, blah, blah. Okay. I am about done. Let me just get through my notes real quick. Mm. I love um, the gifts of the Spirit manifest God's love. I love that one. It's like tongues and prophecy. It's it's all to point to his love. It's all to point to him and to show people the state of their hearts and the state of his heart, which is always open and ready to love them. Okay, so ending with 13. Um, three things will last forever. That's so good. Those are good notes right there. Okay. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. I have faith gives way to sight. So when we, when we meet Jesus and we're up there, that faith, the faith that what we, what we hoped was true, right? That faith will turn into sight. Because we're going to know it's true. We're going to be in its trueness, right? And the hope will turn into experience. Because you're going to be experiencing it. But what I love is that love never changes, right? Love alone is eternal. For God is love, right? Love God, love people this week, guys. And love yourself. Super important there. Because... What good is it to give your body if, if, if you didn't, you know, if there's no love in it, right? Do you love who you are? Do you love the things you're talking about? Do you love the way that you respond when you're angry? Do you love the way you respond when you're irritated? Do you love the way you respond when there's a hardship coming in your life? When there's that bill to pay and then that bill to pay, but you only have enough to pay one of them and you can't pay half on both, how do you respond? Jehovah Jireh. Lord is my provider. He provides for you. So you just love that bill and pay it. <laughs> so this week when you're going out, um, be conscious of your culture, right? Is God happy with the way that you're living your life right now? Is God happy with the way you're running your household? Is God happy with how you are at work, how you are at home as a parent, how you are with your friends, right? How, just start thinking about the culture that's created. And if you have some to toxic cultures in your life that you're just like, whoa, whoa, I knew it was bad, but I didn't know it was that bad. Here's some really, really good advice. Run away, right? Because I realized I was in a toxic environment, and the only thing I could do was completely cut ties and run away. And it was hard at first, but then I realized that God is love, and he's going to love me through anything that I have to go through. But if you need to stay, talk with God, guys. What, if you need to stay in that culture, stay in that culture, right? But you be the light in the darkness. You be the change. You be the love. And if you don't know how to be love, this is so simple. God, how do I love people? I don't feel like I have the capability to care, to actually love people, 
like without condition, God, like actually truly love people. I really don't feel like I have that. And that was like a real conversation I had to have with God, and I just asked him to help just love me. Tell me what real love is. Tell me how, you know, what he did is he showed me how, how patient he was with me and how loving he was with me and how kind he was with me. And ever though, even though I messed up and messed up again, he says, did I, did I throw it in your face? Did I told you so? No, I loved you. I said, you're enough. So just know this week, guys, you're enough. And there's a culture in your life that you're allowing to live and breathe. And what is it? Is it, is it pleasing to God? Is it not? So really just take time and love people. First love God and then love people. Do both. All right. Jesus, we worship you. We love you. We thank you. We bless your holy name. We magnify your name above all else, God. I just ask you to help us create this culture in our, in our oikos, in our, our sphere of influence, God. I just ask you to break through it and bring righteousness and justice, God. And I thank you that you're bringing peace and love and honor into our culture, God. And if there's, if there's an area in our culture that um, is, is leaking air or taking on water, um, show us, God. Show us how to fix it, God. Show us how to, to love this culture into a loving environment, God. We just worship you. We bless you. There's nobody like you. If you guys need prayer for anything, um, come up here. We'll pray for you.